In this video of solving absolute value inequalities, we're going to talk about the six special cases that we might come across. While these are very rare, we should discuss them anyway. So looking at letter A, the absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than 0. So let's think about what this is saying. This is saying, when is this thing closer, sorry, further away from 0 on a number line than 0 itself? This thing has to be bigger than 0. Well, that's like everything. It's always going to be bigger than 0. Almost. There's one case where it's not. There's only one case to consider here. Everything would be a solution, right? If x is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, the absolute value of 5 is 5, 5 is greater than 0. Win. Check your negatives. Negative 10. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7. 7 is greater than 0. Win. So it looks like we're going to have a lot of solutions. But there's only one time when this is not greater than 0. Can you think of what that time is? That would be when this thing is equal to 0. So we would set this up and we could say, OK, x plus 3 cannot equal 0. That's one way that we can write it. So that means that x cannot be negative 3. So x can be any number except negative 3. On a number line, this is going to look really silly. We're going to have negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. How are we going to say that it can be anything except for negative 3? It's like we're like taking a number line and just plucking out that single point. Well, how do we represent when something's not part of the solution set? We use an open circle. So we're going to have an open circle over negative 3, but everything to the right of it is a solution, and everything to the left of it is a solution. So it would look like this. So here's the, basically the algebraic, here's the graphic, and then an interval notation. Again, it's like just going in the number line and just plucking out that one single number, but actually the interval notation gets a little bit, you know, it's, it's very long because of that. So we would say, okay, it's anything from negative infinity to negative 3, where we don't include negative 3, and then also everything bigger than negative 3, so negative 3 to infinity. Special case number 2. When is the absolute value of something smaller than 0? What does it mean if something's smaller than 0? That means that it's negative. So when is something that's an absolute value negative? It's not. So we would say here, there is no solution. Right? It's impossible. You can't find any number. And so sometimes we're like, OK, well, let's try a negative, negative 4. Well, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, but the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. And 1 is not less than 0. So we can, you can test some uh, cases here, but ultimately we're going to figure out that any, anything, the smallest that this can be is 0, and 0 is not less than 0. So there's no solution. On a number line, you would just draw a number line. You can put whatever numbers you want on it. Let's do negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we don't put anything above it. There's no solution, so we represent nothing. Uh, in interval notation, you can either do uh, the braces with nothing inside, representing the, the fact that there's no solution, or you can do the null set. That's like a zero with a slash through it. So if we come across an absolute value being smaller than zero, that's a contradiction, right? That, that goes against the definition of what an absolute value is. There would be no solution. Case number three. Okay, here in this case, we want it to be greater than or equal to zero. So when is an absolute value greater than or equal to zero? Always. It is always greater than or equal to zero. The smallest an absolute value can be is zero, which is greater than or equal to itself. So while there is a little expression in there that we could solve, we don't need to because everything is going to have an absolute value that's greater than or equal to zero. So to represent this on a number line, well, to represent algebraically, we can just say uh, all real numbers. And then on a number line, because it's all real numbers, you can make the number line whatever you want. So we can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then to say that it's all of those numbers, you would just put another arrow above the number line, just saying, yep, it's everything in here. In interval notation, we would do from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, you can also, depending on uh, if your professor says this is okay, you can do the really fancy R, which just indicates all real numbers. So the fancy R has just like two 
horizontal, se uh, sorry, vertical segments, that represents all real numbers. So these are the various ways that you can represent, okay, we have something where the absolute value has to be bigger than or equal to zero, which is everything. In letter D, okay, how about when the absolute value of something is less than or equal to zero? Well, we've already talked about what happens when things are less than zero. There is no absolute values that are smaller than zero. So in this case, we have one solution. There is one thing that could work so that uh, the absolute value is less than or equal to zero, and that's when the expression within the absolute value bars is equal to zero itself. So we could say 2x equals zero, divide both sides by two, and we get x is equal to zero. So when x equals zero, that is the only solution to this absolute value inequality. It's the only number whose absolute value is smaller than or equal to zero. On a number line, we would just put a dot over zero. And in interval notation, we would use the braces to represent just a finite uh, number of solutions. We put zero inside and we close the braces. Two more. We've looked at all the different possibilities when uh, the absolute value deals with zero. Now we're going to look at when it deals with negative numbers. So we have the absolute value isolated on the left-hand side. What happens, uh, wh where are we going to find numbers that are bigger than negative two when we take the absolute value? The absolute value has to be bigger than negative two. Well, absolute value is the, at the very smallest zero, which happens to be bigger than negative two. So what this means is that every number is going to have an absolute value that's greater than negative two. So this would be all real numbers. On a number line, I don't even think I need to draw it again because it's like right here. So we could just say this, this is what it would look like. Every number, no matter what we plug in, if we plug in x equals zero, if we plug in x equals 100, x equals negative five, all of those are gonna have some absolute value that is at the very least zero. So that means that it would definitely be bigger than negative two. This would be the graph, and then this would be the uh, interval notation from negative infinity to infinity. And last but not least, we have the absolute value of something is less than negative two. So when, when is it possible that we take an absolute value and that number is smaller than negative two? It's impossible. Again, it's a contradiction of the definition of uh, absolute value. So this one would have no solution. That's impossible. On a number line, we would just have an empty number line. So you can have your number line negative six. Doesn't really matter what numbers you put here since there's no, nothing to represent. And then you would just leave it blank. In interval notation, again, you can either do the bra uh, braces with nothing inside or you can do the null set.